Hello my friends, in this video we are going to look how we can simulate mouse and keyboard in basically any game or window. I will show you how to do it in World of Warcraft, but you can do it in other games, even browser games. Basically anywhere where you use your mouse and keyboard, programs, browser, your operational system and so on. I will try to explain things as easy as I can, but I assume you have some basic knowledge on how a programming language works. Like what is a variable, what is a loop, what is a function, but if you don't, it's alright. Just follow the logic of what what I'm going to do and try to understand it in more abstract level. The patterns I will use are very simple and porting in general isn't hard. That's why it's a great entry point for a beginner programmer who likes both gaming and coding. Ok, so first of all we need to download and install Node.js. Node.js will allow us to use JavaScript outside the browser. Let's go to nodejs.org and click on this button. Download, launch it and don't forget to check automatically install the necessary tools option. It is very important for what we are going to do. But before we begin to code, let's create a folder for our project and navigate to it. So using JavaScript for boarding isn't quite popular, at least not so popular as using Python for that. That's why we don't have many libraries that can do such a task. The one is Robert.js, the other is Keysender, which I used to make my out of fish board. Personally, I prefer Keysender because it has a much richer interface than Robert.js one. But you might find Robert.js easier, so it's up to you. We'll check it next time though. Alright, so we have chosen our library, let's install everything that it requires. To install packages we use npm install command. So let's write npm install g not a jib. What is this you ask? It is something that allows us to compile Keysender, which is written in C++ and use it in Node. After that we need to install Keysender itself. So let's write npm install Keysender. Congratulations, my friends, you have all the tools you need to make your own bot. So it's time to make a bot, sell it for a lot of money and become rich. Ok, but before we do that, let's open our code editor. There are a lot of them, in the internet you can choose whichever you like. I myself we use Atom. First of all, let's open our newly created folder and save our script under bot.js name. And then let's get all the classes and functions we need using require function. Ok, so we'll need hardware class to be able to simulate keyboard and mouse, but to do that we need to find the window of our game first. That's where get all windows function will help us. We'll also use auxiliary sleep function to make the bot sleep for some time. Global hotkey interface will help us to listen to the events when some key is pressed. Ok, so let's remove this little bug here and uh, let's see what get all windows function does exactly. So let's write console log get all windows. And after that open our command line and write node bot.js. That's how you execute your script. And after that let's press enter. You can see there are a lot of windows on my computer. And here we've got what we need. World of Warcraft window. Every window has handle, title and class name properties. Title and class name are used to discern windows that we are interested in. And handle value we will use in hardware interface to simulate keyboard and mouse. So first of all we need to filter this list and get our window with World of Warcraft title. We will use native find method for that. Ok, let's execute our script and see the result. Nice, we've got our window. Let's pass handle property of this window to hardware constructor. Ok, hardware returns the most important interfaces that we will use when making a bot. We use keyboard interface for keyboard simulation, mouse interface for mouse simulation and work window interface for actions related to the window, like when to focus it, when to close it, for capturing pixels and so on. Ok, now the most interesting part begins, <laughs> oh yeah. Let's open our game first and check that it is in windowed or windowed full screen mode. It doesn't matter whether it is WoW or any other game, it should be in windowed mode if we want our library to work with it. But before looking how to simulate mouse and keyboard, we need to focus our window first. And then you'll ask, can't we make a board work with the windows in the background? Well we can. 
I didn't mention before, but there is also virtual constructor that returns the same interface as hardware constructor. It simulates our keyboard and mouse in virtual way and it doesn't block anything. So basically with it we could make the bot walk in the window in the background while we are freely using our computer. The problem is that many games do not react to such simulation. Moreover, some games could recognize them and you might be even banned for this. So in this video we will use only hardware constructor. Ok, back to focusing our window. For that we use work window set foreground method. Let's also call sleep function with 250 milliseconds so that we give some time for our computer to open the game. Ok, our script focuses the window on its own, nice. So the first method we will look into is mouse move to. To mouse move to we can pass three arguments, x, y and delay. So instead of my explaining in Slavic English, let's just see what it does. But I think you might have already guessed what it does. So if you was attentive enough, you have seen my mouse move from its previous position to x10 and y10 coordinates in relation to the window of the game. So that's basically it. We can move our mouse wherever we like. But first we need to understand where to move our mouse. For example, let's come to this post mail. And our task will be to find coordinates of this post mail on our screen and move our mouse to it. How we can do it? Well, there are many ways. The first one is to use mouse get pause method and just make an interval timer that will fire this method every second, for example. Let's look how it works. You can see that our get post shows us the position of the cursor and we have our coordinates of the mailbox. These five last calls when I didn't move the cursor and it stayed over it. Ok, another way to get those coordinates is to assign a special key that will fire this method. We can do this by using global hotkey constructor. Let's see how to do it. Global hotkey constructor has key property and action method and it's pretty simple. When we press this key, this function is called. Ok, let's start our script. The game is focused, our mouse moves to 1010 and then let's move our mouse over mailbox and press G key. Let's see what our command line has to say. As you can see, it's a little bit more convenient than using interval timer. We have the same results. Somehow I managed to move the cursor over basically the same position. So if script doesn't close on its own, focus command line and press Ctrl C. Ok, so now that we have the right coordinates, let's change our 1010 coordinates to the position of our mailbox. And while we add it, let's also use mouse click method. So that after we move our mouse to the right position, the script will also simulate the right click of our mouse. Nice, so now our bot can open mailboxes. Open your CV and write the Artificial Intelligence Scientist. I'm waiting. <laughs> ok, but it's rather simple. Let's make our bot to do something more interesting, like deleting all the mails that we have. So first we need to get the coordinates of the items and the coordinates of the delete button. For that we have our debugging function, so let's just start the script and use our G key. Ok, so the first item we press G, second item G, third item G, fourth item G, and also let's get the coordinates of our delete button. G. Alright. So now we have all five coordinates we need for our task. But before coding, let's better check what we need to do. First, we need to move our mouse to first item, click on it, then move our mouse to delete button and then click on it too. We need to repeat this logic for every item and for every item we would need to repeat move and click on the delete button. But we know that the position of delete button is always the same. We could make what it would be, 16 calls, move click, move click for every item, but let's not repeat ourselves and create two simple functions for that, uh, open item and delete item. So for delete item function we don't need any parameters because we have only one delete button and its coordinates are always the same.
Ok, now let's abstract it even more by putting all the coordinates of our items into an array and call for each native method that will iterate over every item and pass its coordinates to open item function. You can do it manually calling every function separately if this logic scares you a little. Ok, but before we test our script, let's also call our slip function after opening an item and after deleting it, so that it all won't happen instantly. And another thing, for action methods like mouse click, move, toggle and others which we will look into a little bit later, there is a third argument, it is delay. But delay for different things. For example, in click method it is delay between pressing and releasing the button. For move to method it is delay after the cursor was moved to the position. You can check key center documentation for better explanation on such things. Ok, so we came so far, let's check whether it works. Oh, so we can see that something is wrong here. Welcome to the programming, my friends. First of all, I forgot about confirmation, yeah. And I also couldn't see that our mouse moved to the first item properly. Let's quickly fix it all. I'll just add a new function for confirmation. And the second bug is probably because we don't have delay after clicking on the mailbox. And now that I think about it, we probably don't need coordinates of our four items, because after each deletion, the items will fall to the position of the first one. But it was a good exercise to see how we can operate with multiple coordinates anyway. Alright, let's see how it works. Nice, that was all about mouse click and mouse move to methods. Let's delete our mailbox example. You can find it on my GitHub page in the repository for this video. Link will be in the description. Now let's check what mouse move curve to does. It has four arguments x, y, speed, and deviation. So, as you might have already guessed, this function simulates mouse movement in a human way. Let's see how it works. So basically it works as mouse move to only with speed and deviation configuration. Check my out of ish video if you want more example how it works. Alright, next method will be mouse move. Again, it's basically the same as mouse move to. The only difference is that it accepts coordinates relative to the previous position of the cursor rather than in relation to the whole window as mouse move to works. Let me show you. Let's see some kind of fancy example for your entertainment. You don't need to understand what I'm doing right now, let's just see the result. Execute such script on the computer of your friend and you'll have a lot of fun from his reaction. Alright, but let's get serious here. You pass negative values, it moves to the upper left corner, you pass positive, it moves back. So everything is relative to the previous position. Next let's talk about one of the most important methods that allow us to move our camera. It is mouse toggle. It works pretty simple. It presses the button, holds it as long as we need and then releases it. So now let's move our camera to the right. We will also use mouse move method for that. Now let's check the arguments. The first argument can be either true or false. Well, true means pressing and false means releasing. The second argument defines which button we need to hold. It can be right, left and middle. The same goes for the click method that we saw earlier. So let's look at another example and move our camera for 360 degree. And the last mouse method, mouse scroll wheel. When you give it positive value it scrolls forward, when you give it negative value it scrolls backwards. I can imagine some interesting example with it, so let's look at a simple one.
So that's it. Now we know all the most important methods of mouse interface. But with only mouse it's not very interesting. Let's check what keyboard interface can give us. So the first method is keyboard send key. It has two parameters. The first one is key. Well, the second, as I told you earlier, is delay. We call it, give it a key, and it simulates pressing of this key. Let's see how it happens. We can see that the script simulated pressing B and opened our bags. But it's not very interesting, right? With send key method we can easily make a simple DPS rotation bot. Let's check what we need to do first. The rotation will be both activated and stopped by, for example, Ash key. First of all, we need to understand how much time it takes to cast a skill. We also should figure out how much global cooldown delay takes. Let's check our cast time. So, first is... 1.39 seconds, the second is instant and the third is instant too. So, knowing all that, let's create global hotkey instance for ash key. After that, we need to create global state variable, so that our functions know when to stop. Don't use global variables, it's a bad technique, but for the sake of simplicity, we will use it anyway. Next, let's create a function and call it use skill. It will have two parameters. First one is key, second one is cast time. If we don't give a second argument, it will be equal to our global cooldown delay. Okay, now let's write our main protagonist, send key method. And for writing, we will use slip async function instead of our synchronous slip function. So, Asynchronous programming is a whole different subject, and it's not easy even for an experienced programmer. We needed to make our Ash key event work properly. Without it, our main execution will never finish because of the while loop, and our event that stops rotation will never fire. So check two topics, asynchronous and synchronous programming in JavaScript, and what event loop is if you want an explanation on how it all works. Let's create a DPS rotation function with our main loop. So we have three skills. Let's make three calls then. The first one is under one key, and its cast time is 1.30 seconds, right? The second and the third skills are instant, so their cast time is the same as global cooldown delay. Again, there are a lot of asynchronous keywords here, and don't mind them. Let's also make our state alternate between true and false when we press ash, so that we don't utilize two keys for starting and stopping. Let's see what we made. Okay, now I target our enemy and press H key. And the bot starts rotation. Okay, let's imagine that we killed our enemy. I press H again and it stops. Nice. Then we target another enemy, press H, and it starts rotation again. So we basically made a DPS rotation bot with 20 lines of code. Congratulations. Now let's learn about toggle key method. Toggle key has three parameters. The first one is key, second defines whether to press or release a key, and the third is delay. What we can do with it? For example, we can open all of our bags by holding shift, then we use send key method, and after that we release our shift. Okay, let's see another example. It will be a little bit funnier. Let's make our bot run in circles. The last function for today will be keyboard print text method. And well, it prints text for you. So basically it sends keys of every letter in your text. Let's say something in chat. We'll also use send key method to open the chat and to send the message. With these two methods you can easily make a spamming bot for different purposes, either to look for a group or recruitment to guild or whatever you like. Let's make something funny again. So I prepared some text and actions arrays, and our bot will randomly choose whether to act or to say something. For that we need to create say function first, and it will have text parameter that we will pass to keyboard print text method. Then we will use math random function to make our artificial intelligence of an average wolf player. All right, let's see what we've got. Hey. 
Excellent. You got the idea. Okay, at the end of the video let's talk about delays a little. There are three properties that allow you to assign the delay to all of your send key, toggle key and mouse toggle methods. In these methods it is delay between pressing and releasing respective buttons or keys. Another thing, you can randomize delay by putting two values into an array, like this. So the value will be randomly generated between these two values. You can pass it directly, as if we have seen many times I did in the video, or using these general properties. Well, that's all. It's my first educational video. If you watched till the end, thank you for enduring my English. If I helped you in some way or, well, entertained you, press like, uh, I'd be very grateful for that. The next video will be about how to capture pixels from any game, and with that knowledge you will be able to make a lot of different and complicated bots. You'll be able to analyze your UI, analyze your screen, and there are a lot of interesting things you can do with it, believe me. I'm also planning to make Let's Make series, where I will make bots for different games, and, well, if you have an idea what bot we could make together or what bot you would like to learn how to make, write your suggestions in the comments and, well, subscribe if you're interested. All the code to this video you can find on my GitHub page, check the link in the description. And the last thing, don't use bots, make them. Thanks for watching.